Uh, right now, we have four generations of jurors sitting in a jury box. Uh, that's more than we've had, and certainly we have greater diversity in terms of cultural diversity, gender diversity, and the like. These four um, generations have widely divergent values, widely divergent life experiences, and most importantly, widely divergent learning styles. Something that we really need as lawyers to think about when we're trying a case. A failure to communicate effectively on the part of a lawyer is absolutely, absolutely a, a failure to persuade. Uh, jurors as adult learners are imprinted with generational characteristics. Common life experiences, common cultural experiences, and most importantly, common educational experiences. The generations within themselves have same values, many times the same opinions, many times the same learning style. There are four generations now serving in the jury box. Uh, some names change. The millennials are sometimes called Gen Y. The traditionalists are sometimes called uh, just flat out old timers in some publications. But the bottom line, or I like to call them the Jurassics, which uh, kind of fall into. But the bottom line is these people are very, very different in many respects. Uh, and as you can see, they have differences in their technological aptitude. Uh, we are very, very different, particularly as we talk about presenting to the jury. You can, as I'll illustrate to you, read it to some people. Some people have to read it for themselves. Others need visual cues. And then there are some people that were literally the uh, millennials are called the sound bite generation by educational psychologists. There's an entire uh, group, uh, body of literature out there and group of people studying how do we educate these people. As trial lawyers, if you ignore this, your message will not get through. You will never persuade anyone if they cannot understand you. They will never trust you if you don't speak their language. Now, I've selected some examples very, very quickly to show you how the generations differ. Let's talk about what their stereotypical concept is of a lawyer. Atticus Finch, Jack McCoy, Tom Cruise, <coughs> yes, Demi Moore is there too, and Perry Mason. This is the way different generations look at this stereotype. The traditionalists, these are people who lived through the Great Depression, know about World War II, the Cold War, the baby boomers, where I fit, and a lot of my colleagues, Vietnam, civil rights, these are the formative elements in our, in our lives. The Gen Xers had MTV, some have single parents. They went through Three Mile Island in Chernobyl and they're referred to as latchkey kids. The millennials, well they had Columbine. Kids call them mall rats, okay? They call themselves mall rats, they know what a we is. And they also lived through, as young, young, formative children, the 9-11 experience. What are the values these people live with? Traditionalists like duty. Baby boomers are looking for change. We were out to change the world. Gen Xers, self-directed and independent. Millennials, multitasking and collaborative workers. This is one startling fact. This actually came from one of the educational psychologists. You know, we oftentimes have problems with technology. There's this Dr. Panashi who says that by the time a millennial reaches 21, they'll have 200,000 hours on email, 20,000 hours on cell phones and or video games, but less than 5,000 hours reading. So do you want to put up static graphics in front of these people? Traditionalists, your uh, gray-haired Jurassic dinosaur type, uh, and I can say that because I am one, uh, type jurors, they oftentimes are, will live with the spoken word. You can actually read a document to them. The baby boomers like to read. They are also incredible. They are the note takers. We had two boomers on this jury. They filled notepad after notepad after notepad. After six months, they had a pile like this, okay? Uh, the Gen Xers, I don't think they took a note. And the millennials, not one. Not one note throughout. They're the sound biters. You have to hit them with the sound bite. You must assess your, jur your jury's dominant learning style. You have to identify the learning style of the opinion leaders, the people you believe are gonna influence the judgment of the jury. And you have to utilize the optimum presentation mode. 
Mark Lear, Mark Lanier told me that one of his first uh, trials on Vioxx, he literally stayed up all night the night before because he realized that the profile of the juror had changed and he had no juror over 34 years old. He completely changed his opening, stayed up all night long to pitch it. And that was the uh, trial in which he got a verdict of 225 million dollars, as I recall, in Texas. So obviously, he knew who he was talking to and pitched it to who he was talking to and communicated with them in a manner that they understood, as well as building trust, establishing fairness throughout, and showing that he was knowledgeable.